morning, bro. Um, I'd like to start today's little video with a thank you to the Wooten Fire Brigade. Uh, you guys attended a road traffic collision down the road here last night that Emma, my second daughter, uh, called in. She was first on scene. And after she'd given her statements to the law, I presume, she was talking to one of you guys and happened to mention that if you need any help to clear the road, her dad lived just at the road and he could come down with a tractor and, and uh, give him a hand. Whereupon she was asked, would that be Farmer P? To which she replied, Yes, it is. Whereupon she was then asked, Are you the young one? <laughs> Which I thought was quite funny. And she said, No, the young one's at home in bed because she's got to start early in the morning. It then turned out that apparently you guys, the Wooden Fire Brigade, uh, watch Farmer P in the tea room. Uh, probably all having a jolly good laugh at my expense because I do know some of you. So, but anyway, thank you guys for looking after Emma and thank you for being there. Uh, how can I put this you are the service none of us want to need but you are the service that when we do need you we're jolly well grateful you're there so you do a sterling job and we are all very very grateful for what you do thank you uh, do you remember was any of you there that day when the fire brigade was called to the farm when my old skid steer was on fire how many of you can remember that do you remember turning up in your uh, appliance, in the yard, and seeing this bloke in little green shorts and a t-shirt with a six foot hose pipe, stood 15 foot away from the machine because the pipe went long enough. The hose pipe had about 0% PSI pressure on it. This bloke there flicking water at the skid steer, trying to put the fire out. How many of you can remember that? Because I know <laughs> oh, you had a bloody good laugh at my expense on that. What'd you do? You know, the machine was on fire. It was uphill from the barn full of hay. And I was trying to stop the fire from perhaps spreading spilt diesel and going into my hay. But I can imagine the picture of me there trying to put it out. I mean, I could have peed faster than that pipe. It was quite funny. So, anyway, you saved the day again that day. Thank you, guys. Anyway, so, uh, that aside... Uh, today's video is about farm security. Uh, it had been noted on the farm Facebook page. Uh, a lot of you now have joined the farm Facebook page. The numbers have shot up in the last couple of weeks and I get a lot of messages. I can't answer all the messages because sometimes there are dozens and occasionally many, many, many dozens. So along with Facebook messages, uh, emails, uh, stuff on YouTube and stuff, <coughs> And I've only got, what, 11,000 subscribers. God knows how rich Cornock I mean, copes with it with 100,000 because there's just not enough hours in the day to answer them all. So I'll answer as many as I can, but I won't answer all of them. But anyway, I've had a couple of pertinent questions regarding farm security, particularly after the drone footage and me showing potential thieves um, where the weak spots might be, where they could perhaps get in and where stuff might be kept. So... Rest assured, guys, guys uh, I take farm security pretty seriously, always have done. So along with the CCTV, which is fantastic for playing back the pictures of the oik going like that to the camera because he's been nicking all your stuff all night and you didn't find out the next morning. CCTV's okay, but, you know, that's just evidence gathering. And if they're clever, there's no evidence. Uh, so, which is why we employ the baby alarms in the barns and the sheds. If you've got an outdoor shed, garage, outhouse, anything within 100 feet of the house, by far the best security you can put in there is a baby alarm. Buy them new, buy them second hand, whatever it is, put a baby alarm in your shed. It is brilliant. Uh, the one we got down the shed there we've had in the barn, the big one, we've had that one eight, ten years. If I set the sensitivity of that, I can hear a mouse fart in there. Excuse me, brown flakes. So anyway, so that's inside the sheds. So what do we do outside the sheds? Well, we have a couple of things we do outside the sheds. And some of them rely on electricity, so are not 100%. Some of them are mechanical. And this is one of our mechanical alarms. So this is a Bisley alarm. 
So it is a really simple, some people call them a poacher's trap or a poacher's alarm. So you'll find these set up in private woodlands and that is a trip wire and it's just to let, let the landowner know you're about. But it's also very good for setting up around a yard in certain ways. And they use these little fellas, which is a blank 12 gauge, car 12 gauge cartridge. So really easy to use, although you do need to be cautious and this is not a toy, right? This is not for kids, not for messing about if, and you have got to be sensible with it. So anyway, this fellow fixes to a post, all right? So he's fixed to a post that way. So we're protecting everything in that direction. So it's not fixed to a post, it's in my hand, so I got to do it hard, the hard way. So the setup is really easy. Pull, pull the firing pin up, and he will actually lock. I don't know if you can see that in there. He just locks to one side. You use this little fella to sit into that ring. Okay, so, and I just do it like so. All right, your cartridge, by the way, is nowhere near at this point. So once that's set in, and kind of facing the right direction, because you can go in any direction from this, sideways or straight on. Once you've done that, important bit, your safety pin. Insert your safety pin. That goes in, That's, that goes in and that does not come out until everything else is set. So your safety pin's in, your trip is in, you now set up your line. This hasn't got to be that tight, and depending on how you set it, you kind of need to use a bit of judgment on that. But uh, you can use fishing line, you can use uh, a thin wire. Uh, we use a certain material, which I won't tell you what it is because you know what to look for. And you set this up at around just above belly button height. So, or badger or muntjac deer or dog fox, nothing else can set this off. It needs to be something taller than belly button height. So you set your cable up. Um, you don't want to have this more than say 100 feet. 100 feet long is plenty. Any more than that is too much stretch. Um, so once you've got this set up and you've got the tension just right, you can then put your cartridge in. All right. Which I'm not going to do it now, just in case. Once the cartridge is in and set up, you can then pull out your safety pin. Not before. Okay. And what will happen is if Mr. Burglar comes along. And pulls your trip wire bang off goes this very loud bang followed by a loud fighting authority noise as mr burglar soils himself so uh, mr burglar be aware that this is only the first bang you hear if you set one of these off so anyway it's <laughs> i jest in saying that you have got to set this up in such a way that it cannot cause harm um, if you have this set up in any way that could either deliberately or accidentally cause your thief physical harm, then you're for the high jump, okay? You could be done. So this needs to be set up in such a way that this is definitely facing down. You can't have it facing horizontal or any, anywhere where it could actually hurt anybody, and you cannot use a real cartridge. This gap in here is deliberately short, so only a blank cartridge are going to. You cannot fit a live cartridge in here. All right, there's ways around that, but don't do it. So there you go. The, we employ these things on areas of the farm where I consider us to be potentially vulnerable to someone coming in. And they are there simply to let me know someone's there. Um, if this goes off, our dogs are gonna go mad. And the next thing you'll see is the searchlights going out around the place. So busy alarm. So eBay, I think this is about 15 quid. I bought four of these. I've used three. This is a spare, um, and at the moment I don't actually have anywhere where I, I need this, so we're just keeping it as a spare. Um, so yeah, 15 quid on eBay. These things are expensive, 25 quid for 10. But you know, if you put it somewhere where it's sheltered and not going to get too much weather, that last a year. I change them about once a year. So there you go. That is today's video. A little bit more on farm security. Don't forget, by the way, where you've put it. You know, it's no good going back later on. And don't forget to tell the staff where it is. So if you've got staff or anybody who might want to go somewhere where you have this set, let them know, all right? Because <laughs> you're frightening them. 
All right, this is scary, scary thing. This is a loud bang. So there you go. I'm sure there's more safety stuff to be involved and someone say, oh, you should have said this and you should have said that. But at the end of the day, this is there to warn you of an intruder and to let the intruder know that you know they're there. So anyway, until the next time, I'm going to go off and uh, have a couple more goes at making an intro, shorter one, more interesting one. We'll see you next time.